Okay, welcome to another video. It's finally time to update you guys on how I got on with Fedora Silver Blue version 32. If you haven't watched the first video, I'll chuck a link up there, I think, or is it there? Somewhere, and you can go and watch that one before you watch this one. Basically, what we did in the first video was just set it up and gave our general first impressions as we were experiencing it for the first time. Since then, I've taken it away and I've used it for a good few days, and this is how I got on. I installed Silver Blue onto my main desktop computer. I then went ahead and set it up for my general daily use. Since then, I've also installed it onto my laptop, which is what we are on right now. As you can see, it's changed a little bit in its look and feel compared to the default setup. I've installed a few GNOME extensions like Dash to Dot, Caffeine, and in some others. I've also changed the theme and icons to Arc, pretty much like I always do, which is a bit more of a pain than usual, but I'll get into that later on in this video. So, before we start, let's give a brief description of what Silverblue is. It's an immutable Linux distribution that does share a lot of the similarities from the standard version of Fedora Workstation. You'll find the same implementation of the GNOME desktop, and it shares a lot of the same default applications. But unlike the regular version of Fedora, it doesn't use DNF to manage its packages. Instead of that, it relies on flat packs to provide most of the applications that a user might need. Although you can layer packages that are not covered by flat packs using the RPM OS tree. Updates are atomic and set up to be automatic by default. Like Fedora Workstation, it also uses Wayland as its display server, but you can switch to Xorg in the login screen. Now that's out of the way, let's get started. During my time with Silverblue, I fully embraced the flat pack way of doing things. Fedora has its own Flatpak repo, which it uses for the default applications you'll find installed when you first boot up. Some of these Flatpaks are things like Eye of Gnome, which is an image viewer, the text editor Gedit, Evince the document viewer, and quite a few others. Here was where I encountered those problems with the icons and theming that I just mentioned. Most of the applications do pick up the correct icon theme, but not all. The ones that didn't, I had to go back and manually set with Vim. The theming for these applications was also a little bit confusing too. So some would display the correct theme that I chose, which is Arc Dark, but then some wouldn't, which is why I mention Eye of Gnome and Gedit in particular. These were provided by Fedora's Flatpak repo, which I found out didn't actually include the Arc Dark theme. So to remedy this with the FlatHub repository enabled, I uninstalled the applications provided by Fedora's repo and switched over to the FlatHub repo. I then reinstalled them from there while I also installed the Arc Dark Flatpak theme, which is provided by FlatHub. Once I got that out of the way though, I was good to go. I made sure from then on, the source I was stalling all of my packages from was FlatHub. So while I was on my desktop computer, I looked for an easy way to install and manage virtual machines. As the only virtual machine that's actually available as a flat pack on the software store is GNOME Boxes, I went for that. This was fine for the most part and everything worked as it should. I was able to share files between the guest and the host like you would expect and I didn't really notice any difference in performance compared to using GNOME Boxes as a native application. When it comes to other applications, I was quite fortunate. As I tend to mainly use a combination of GIMP, OBS and Caden Live to edit these videos, which are all available in flat packs, I had no complaints there. Steam is also available as a flat pack, so I just decided to go with that, and it performed okay compared to the native application for the most part over the few days that I used it. For web browsers you get Firefox installed by default, but this isn't a flat pack. As you can see the source for this application is RPM OS Tree. You can uninstall this though and use Firefox provided by FlatHub once you've enabled the repo, if you so prefer. But since it was already there for me, I stuck with the default provided. Now I tend to use a secondary web browser, so for this I decided I'll just, I'm just going to ditch Flatpak altogether and I just use an app image of Google Chrome, because I was only going to really be using Firefox for the most part anyway. I also installed the LibreOffice Flatpak plus a whole host of other applications. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this all works together and using GNOME software to manage these applications got the job done without too much effort required. However, using flat packs for all of your applications isn't always realistic, not yet anyway, which I found out quickly in the first video, which is where RPM OS Tree comes in. What RPM OS Tree allows you to do is install most of the packages you would traditionally find with DNF. 
Using the command rpm install will grab the packages for you, then layer them into a new deployment of Silverblue. So I found this a more than adequate compromise, which does actually have a lot of benefits. The main one being the ability to roll back the changes by booting into an older deployment of Silverblue, just in case there are any issues with your new deployment. You can check the details of these deployments using the command rpm os3 status, which will also tell you what packages have been added into each deployment, which I thought was pretty cool. You can remove older deployments that you no longer need, reclaiming that bit of extra disk space. The main downside I found to installing packages this way was the need to reboot every time you wanted to use these new packages. But as this is the way Silverblue is designed to work, I can't really complain here. I kept the packages I installed this way to a minimum, opting to only install the odd theme, evolution including EWS and then a few command line tools that I like to use like Tmux and Htop. Now every install of Fedora Silverblue comes pre-installed with an application called Toolbox, which personally I found extremely useful. What Toolbox allows you to do is create containers that are kind of overlaid your host machine. So what do I mean by this? Well. You'll be able to easily access the host's file system and resources whilst you're in these containers. As you can see here, having a host terminal and a toolbox terminal side by side then running HTOP, it doesn't really appear to give you any different results. And accessing the host's file system is just as easy as changing to the directory you wish, and you're done. At first, I just thought this was for command line tools, but I was wrong. You can use DNF to install pretty much anything that you would generally find in DNF. Like here, I'll do a quick demo of launching get it from a toolbox that I created called testbed. So you can even create a .desktop file for the contained application on the host and then launch it like you would any other program. You aren't limited to the latest version of Fedora to use as a container either. You can set it to grab an image of an older release and create a new toolbox from there. Now, I'm not a developer, but I did find myself playing around in Toolbox quite a bit. I find it also provided a very good way to install and instantly use a package that you didn't want to go through the effort of creating a new deployment with RPM OS Tree for. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this over RPM OS Tree for packages that you find essential and use a lot, but I did find myself doing it more than I thought I would, and I didn't really suffer any negatives because of doing so. One example of that would be ACPI. So ACPI is a very small package that I like to use to check the details of my laptop's battery. And having to create a new deployment just to check that every now and then seemed a little bit excessive. So I was really happy when I realized I could just install it in a toolbox container and be done with it. There are a lot of other useful things that you can do with a toolbox that will benefit developers. So I'll leave a link in the description so you can read a bit more about it. Overall, using Fedora Silverblue day to day as my daily driver has been a brilliant experience. Once you've worked out exactly what packages you need and layer them using RPM OS tree, it's pretty much smooth sailing from there. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I also installed this to my laptop and I've been using it as my only operating system ever since. So the touchpad gestures that are enabled by default work brilliant while using Wayland, so I decided to extend them with the GNOME extension to enable a bit more control on the gestures used to switch workspaces. I just wish this wasn't only a feature restricted to Wayland, as I find myself switching between that and Exor quite a lot throughout my time with Silverblue. The use of Flatpak should have you covered for most things, and updates are all handled through the GNOME software store, or if you prefer, this can be done with the command line. Updates are configured to be downloaded automatically, but this can be turned off by opening GNOME Software Store and jumping into the update preferences. Silverblue to me feels like the kind of operating system that gets out of your way and lets you focus on the things that you care about, without having to worry about the general maintenance that comes with a lot of other Linux distributions, which is a refreshing change and one that I think I could get used to. Now, although I've already wiped it from my desktop computer ready for the next distro I'm going to be reviewing, it is going to be remaining on my laptop for the time being. I've just enjoyed it that much. So, if you're somebody that already relies quite heavily on flat packs and likes the idea of an operating system that is designed around them, which is easy to use, immutable and updates automatically by default, give Silverblue a try, because what you're getting is a forward focus distribution that is only going to continue getting better as the future draws closer. 
Okay, so that was Fedora 32 Silver Blue. I really enjoyed it actually, and I'm going to be keeping it on this laptop for as long as possible. Although, obviously, sometimes that does have to change because I might have to do a video and I'm run out of discs on my main computer, and then what's only left is the laptop. So that's why sometimes things change a bit on the laptop. Anyway, so Distro Spinner, I'm going to hopefully start on the weekend. It's been a bit delayed because I've had sort of a bit of a backlog I've been trying to catch up but I don't think there's anything stopping me now so we can get back to doing the sort of weekly distro spinner videos as well which I really enjoy doing and hopefully you do as well and that's it so thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please subscribe and I'll see you on the next one bye bye